The year 2020 bore witness to a resurgence of social justice movements in America, most notable the fight for racial equality prompted by the killing of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and numerous people of color at the hands of law enforcement. The fight for racial equality, however, was not new, rather the continuation of the civil rights movement rooted in 1950 and 60s and unfinished in America. Ella Josephine Baker helped launch the civil rights movement in 1940, where it can tell black and white individuals work towards social justice. Baker spent almost half a century raising Americans' national awareness and played a substantial part in three of the most prominent civil rights groups of the 20th century. Never interested in the spotlight nor sought recognition, despite all she accomplished for the black community, Baker became one of the lesser-known civil rights leaders. With Baker's powerful speeches and thorough work, communication was successfully and rightfully bridged between the white and black community, aiding other leaders into ending segregation in public places, who work in several boycotts, organizations, and the civil rights movement led to equality. In today's American society, legal segregation has been brought to its knees. Her work broke the pattern of racial segregation and formed a new communication in history. Ella Baker helped form the civil rights movement, organize several organizations, and empowered young black leaders. I have found a greater sense of importance by being a part of those who Ella Baker was born on December 31st, 1903 in Norfolk, Virginia. Growing up, Baker recognized the need for social justice at a young age, listening to her grandmother's stories. Her grandmother grew up as a slave and later lived in the Jim Crow era of American history in the South. Her grandmother's struggles in the face of racism and inequality inspired Baker throughout her life to fight for racial justice. How undeveloped he is. No human being, I will be willing to say, no human being relishes being sat upon and beaten. Baker received her education at Shaw University in Raleigh, North Carolina. She opposed school practices as a student that she felt were unjust, such as misogynistic policies. After graduating as Valdivic Victorian in 1927, Baker moved to New York where she immersed herself in social activist groups. Baker met people struggling from the poverty of the Great Depression's poverty and was drawn to the radical political activism that became the work of her life. In 1930, Baker entered a league known as the Young Negroes Cooperative League, or the YNCL, whose goal through collaborative planning was to grow black economic influence. She involved herself in a variety of women's organizations as well, noting that being a woman, especially a woman of color, came with even more social challenges. The Brown vs. Board of Education of Topeka was one of the many historic 1954 Supreme Court cases where the justices unanimously decided that racial segregation of public schools was unconstitutional. This was a major court case which sparked the civil rights movement. When Baker joined the YNTL in 1930, the aim was to coordinate and encourage cooperatives as well as to inform the community on the economic benefits of cooperatives. The YNTL was systematic in its vision, establishing educational collective defense, medical and political services, with economic emancipation as a primary mission. The effectiveness of Baker's work earned her scholarship to attend Berkeley Labor College in July 1931 from the Cooperative League of America. Baker used the YNTL to promote quality within consumers' cooperatives for black women, hoping to break down a communication barrier. Her passion for equality led to her being elected the YNCL's national director in 1931. In 1940, Baker joined the National Association of the Advancement of Colored People, known as the NAACP, as the assistant field secretary. This organization included bare participants as it was created in a racist state in the South, where acts of racial terror were commonplace. Baker risked her life working for social justice as the members were killed for doing the same. The NAACP's mission was to ensure the political, educational, social, and economic equality of U.S. minority groups to be recognized. The NAACP sought to eliminate, through democratic processes, obstacles to racial equality. She toured the South with the NAACP and emerged as one of the most successful organizers. She moved from small town to small town in the 1940s, persuading ordinary African Americans who had been enslaved and terrorized for more than 200 years to come together and peacefully insist that basic human rights be honored. Baker grew frustrated with the NWACP's lack of inclusion of mass mobilization and democracy practice within an organization, believing the NWACP was not making a significant impact against Jim Crow laws. Baker's NWACP peers struggled with accepting leadership from women as well. Considering her experience and established track record, she believed the association should devote more energy to support its true goals rather than celebrating a charismatic leader. Ultimately, 
Due to her frustration, coupled by NAACP's bureaucratic nature, she resigned as director in 1946. Instead, Baker collaborated with the New York branch to interrogate local schools and increase the quality of black children's education. Baker co-founded the Group of Friendship in 1955 to raise funds for the South Civil Rights Movement. She met a group of Southern black ministers in 1957 and helped create the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, known as the SCLC, to organize reform efforts throughout the South. Baker served as the SCLC's director with Martin Luther King Jr. as the president. Baker often felt it was more challenging serving as director considering she was a woman of color. She wasn't as respected and had to stand up for herself. I was difficult. I wasn't an easy pushover uh, because I could talk back a lot. And not only could, but did. The LCLC staged a 381-day boycott of the Montgomery, Alabama segregation bus system, which was started off by Rosa Parks' refusal to give proceed to a white man on December 1, 1955. Then, in 1960, a group of colored students were denied service at Wilsworth's lunch counter in North Carolina. The students refused to leave which inspired protests across the South. In order to give speech to the Wilsworth students, King traveled to North Carolina, but Ella felt that just speaking to them was not enough. Baker wasn't satisfied enough with her work, so she decided to create a stronger communication between her and young leaders. Baker was frustrated by the challenges of teamwork and organization at the LCLC, close to her experience at the NWACP. She also considered MLK Jr. and other black ministers competing authoritative leadership styles challenging and counterproductive. This event forced her to exit the LCLC, but continued working with the protesting students. Years of work, both within and outside the NWSAP and LCLC, among young people, led to her organizing a conference at her alma mater, Shaw University, in April 1960. This was established as a student nonviolent coordinating committee, known as SNCC. This civil rights group was founded to give more voice to young black students in the civil rights movement. She wanted to put together student groups from all over the South and make them achieve more than just disjointed efforts, and over 300 students attended the first meeting. Baker recognized the student's potential in the city movement and immediately decided to put together representatives of the movement to meet each other and discuss future work. Baker organized and orchestrated students for this new civil rights organization. Sync's formation exemplified Ella's ability to not only lead a movement, but to establish group-based leadership. Baker's commitment to encouraging young African Americans to become active participants in the civil rights movement led to increased social and economic mobility around the nation for African Americans and banned racial discrimination. This allowed women, religious minorities, African Americans, and low-income families greater access to services. In 1964, Baker was also an advisor to the formation of the Democratic Freedom Party, known as MDFP, of Mississippi. This was formed to overthrow the representation of the all-white Democratic Party. Defending the right of black citizens to vote was the main goal Ella Baker strived to accomplish and is part of the reason why black citizens today are able to freely communicate their opinions through the election. The Democratic Party included racist all-white primaries and refused to support black Southerners. Through the 1970s, Baker continued to organize students interested in political activism. In appreciation of her work, in May 1985, she received a doctorate in letters from the City College of New York. Despite numerous organizations' involvement in the civil rights movement, SNCC played a significant role in fomenting change for African Americans, and it's likely they would not have been successful without the leadership of Ella Baker. Pioneering members of SNCC were inspired by Baker to look beyond interrogation to greater social change, and to view King's own violence concept more as a political tool than way of life. Ella often had to be loud and demanding in her career as a woman of color to be heard. Her accomplishments meant that she's closer to racial freedom and was able to honor her grandmother. Baker got a leader such as John Lewis, Julian Bond, and many more. If Baker's leadership never developed SNCC as an organization, the civil rights movement would have had a significant adjustment. In favor of the critical behind-the-scenes work that helped sustain the fight for black liberation, Baker shone the spotlight. Without her, the U.S. wouldn't have developed. Although the U.S. has come a long way into reaching equality, unaddressed systematic racism is a critical issue in the United States. Today's Black Lives Matter movement draws widely from the black radical tradition and Ella Baker's strategic work continues to be inspirational. Her impact remains crucial in the United States, even if her name isn't as familiar to the world as other leaders. Baker often gets quoted in books, but recently, Joe Biden accepted the nomination to the Democratic Party's nominee for president by quoting her. Baker was a movement strategist and organizer whose political insights, modest leadership style, and sharp political perspectives were legendary.